This is a HeadGum Original. Jake and Amir, two Jews that you can't forget. In 2010, they were big on the internet. But then three failed pilots, two rejected movie scripts. One last-ditch effort to try to stop their career from going to shit. Another podcast, each app different from the last. It's the Swiss Army knife of shows. Meet your two pathetic hosts. Back at it again with the white cans. Wow, that's so funny you say that because I just posted a picture of us on our Instagram story, and I want you to read. The caption I chose, <laughs> which is really a good segue into the first segment of us getting on the same wavelength. This Apropos. is what I wrote. Okay, read this. Back at it again <laughs> with the white tans. <laughs> so really close. <laughs> really close. Yeah. Uh, you're usually not this askew in the chair. We're back in the same studio yeah. again, but the New York studio this time. Right. The studio doesn't have a lot of depth. Yeah. So I guess we've rearranged the cameras uh, to accommodate. You're that. like facing fully towards me. Yeah. We don't usually do usually that. You usually you cheat out, cheated out. But this camera, it's 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 driving to my left side. Uh -huh. you know? so, so this is fine. And yes, I can fully turn. That. I don't need to... I don't need to worry. Yeah. You don't need to like sort of like no. cheat out to the I can audience. I just be myself. Because there is no audience. Right, exactly. exactly. Also, right. I was thinking, well, that was our original theme song. Yes. Which Shout is, out to Ferris. We're back to the OG. People mm -hmm. first didn't like it. Because it was too mean. Then we switched it. Now this one's too nice. Now we're back to the original yeah. too mean. We got to write one more that's just innocuous. It's in the middle. It's timid. It's tepid. It's yeah. fine. It's saying nothing. Yes, because mm -hmm. we are nothing. It's a beige right. flag. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. My beige flag. Uh, and then the last thing I was thinking about is when we do do a live show, the whole audience can participate in oh, our man. stiff hands up. That's going to be really nice. Yeah. When are we going to do a live show? Uh, probably 2025, 2026, something like that. When he, that's so far away to well, say 2026. This is 2024. Yeah. So election in November, and then we'll do one in like December or January. I see. Okay. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's still early. I feel like we could do one pre election. Really? Yeah, we could do like October in Chicago. That'd be really nice. That's cool. Or we could do post election, we move to Australia, depending on who wins. Yeah. Depending on how rigged it was. Right, exactly. Exactly right. Uh, well, since we were on the same wavelength, um, let's play that wavelength game. Okay. Which we used to do before live shows. Yes. To get on the same wavelength, we're going to say three, two, one, then any word in the world. Exactly. And then we're going to try to use word association to get closer to that same word until we're saying three, two, one, and yeah. the same word. This is how we get on the same page, on the same level. Although... Out of nowhere, we said back at it again with the white, and then it's something that rhymes with van, so yeah. it's a good start. Right, exactly. Maybe we shouldn't play this game because we can only get further apart. No, we can get 100% accuracy. Total overlap. Okay. It's a little hard to explain, but we can just show it to you guys. Yeah. This is how we used to get sort of on the same page. Three, two, one. Shoes. Door. Three, two, one. Socks. Window. <laughs> Three, two, one. House. Wall. <laughs> Three, two, one. Ceiling. Home. <laughs> three, two, two one, one four. <laughs> three, two, two one, one studio. studio. No, you waited I for cheated, it. Yeah, I didn't know. I was because yeah. there's a cat and mouse game of do I go to your word? Yeah. Do you go to mine? Uh huh. Um, yeah, I thought we you never were gonna come to that. mine faster. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that was hard. Okay. That was rough. We should say this is segments of uh, uh -huh. a show that changes every 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. Let's, we'll do. First segment is this game. Yeah. But let's we'll... really try to nail it. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Pat. Potato. Three, two, two one. one fries. <laughs> we keep going back and forth. Three, like, two, two, one. Pants. pants. Yes. 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 That's how you do it. Yes. And now we're sort of warmed up. We're mm -hmm. calibrated. Yeah. So the third one is just, we might even nail it in one. Right. Like, there's no world where we don't yeah. just fucking get it. It's true. Like, okay. And it doesn't have to be something in the room, though it can be. Yeah. yeah. It could be. All right. But it doesn't have to be either. Why should it be? It could be anything right. in the fucking planet. Okay. It could even be an adjective. I don't fuck 
It could be a color. <laughs> three, two, <laughs> three, two, one, blue. Yeah, Let's, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, ready? Okay. Three, three two, two, one, snow. Tree. <laughs> What did you say? I said tree. And you said snow. It's not it's not that far off. Not too far apart. Three, Three, two, two, one, nature. (laughs) Three, two, one, forest. Ooh, I was gonna say forest too. (laughs) Three, Three, two, two, one, one, grass. (laughs) Three, two, one, chipmunk. chipmunk. Yes. And that's That's that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh so you're not listening to what I say is what I'm starting to realize. What do you mean? You're just sort of hopping between, and I should say homie hopping between, no. different words that you say. You say mountain, and then you say hill. I said snow, and you didn't even fucking calibrate to that at yeah. all. Well, I, You're steamrolling me. <laughs> you, came to, I, I, you came to me also. I came to New York. Forest. I came to the studio. And you're not even seeing the forest from the mountain, from the <laughs> from snow. The, from the trees. Yeah. You said squirrel. You said chipmunk. Yeah. I, I thought, have to meet you more than halfway. Yeah, but in the second one, I think I came I came to you because you said hat. <laughs> and I and then I said shirt. And then we both said pants. Nicole, will you play back every word we've said so far? No, yeah, because I said potato. It. And then you immediately came said to fries. me. Like the little sub <laughs> cuck you are. I said fries. Like that beta motherfucker What, what you did you are. say after I potato? I said potato. You sa- I went directly to you. <laughs> like a fucking nothing. alpha. I wrote to you <laughs> like every day. Like the man that I am. <laughs> Three, two, two one, one, corn. <laughs> Three, two, two one, one woman. <laughs> now we're going back to the other. <laughs> Three, two, two one, one, movie. Bucket. Blanket. <laughs> said bucket. Okay. Bucket, bucket of popcorn. Uh, uh, bucket and blanket. No, what did you say? I said bucket. Yeah, you said you said uh, movie. movie. Yeah. yeah. Three, two, two one, one, bathroom. Film. Three, <laughs> Three, two, two one, one soda. <laughs> You're just describing the movie going experience and backwards. Three, two, one, purchasing a ticket at home. <laughs> Deciding on a Fandango. film. <laughs> Have you seen a movie since Gemma was born? Um, not in a theater. Yeah. But I did install a projector at my house okay that is badass this is I do downstairs have, or yes. up where the tv already is no because the the old den was right next to Gemma's like nursery yeah shared a wall we quickly realized that that just wasn't it wasn't it wasn't Gucci. bueno no because she would wake up to the noise of the yeah TV. we would creep in and it kind of worked when she was a baby baby but then that like four months where just like noises woke her up and I she see. would just cry. Light yeah. sleeper. Yeah, not not worth it. So TV's still up there, projector at the bottom. Yeah, the TV and then we we installed the projector downstairs. But yeah. then also we we should have done this when we had just the TV. It might have saved me a bunch of money, but we got the Apple like Vision Pro, the goggles. Not the goggles, <laughs> the, the headphones. Oh, interesting. So like I'm getting incredible sound. As You're I'm watching, watching a movie at home with headphones. Yeah, Jill and I. You can connect up to two pairs to wow. an Apple TV. Did you think of that or did somebody tell you that? I've uh, never heard of that, watching TV at home with yeah, headphones. Yeah, I, I thought of it and I just I was like, I wonder if you can connect multiple pairs to an Apple TV. And then I Googled and it was like, yeah, you can connect, connect two. Is that like, dangerous? Great. Like you can't hear anything else that's going on? No, like we have the baby monitor like so you up see visually. And, yeah, we can we can see her. And also now she's like one, so it's like if she wakes up, that's fine. Yeah, it's, she can cry. Somebody she doesn't, can yeah, she go, she goes back to sleep. But yeah. yeah, if she if she woke up and cried, we wouldn't be like Rush. I love this movie. It's <laughs> yeah. really loud. <laughs> wow. And we did watch we watched um uh Oppenheimer. And wow, then, with and, headphones and yeah. the, the thing the whole time. And I felt like I had the Oppenheimer experience. Maybe you not exactly but that's how Christopher yeah. Nolan yeah, that's not wanted how me to, it. but yeah. it was on a yeah. it was on a, it's, a big it's a 110 inch projector. Yeah, but he shot big. it in 4K IMAX. Yeah, so but he really wanted big. to experience it. I didn't it. see it in IMAX. Yeah, and I did have to stop it a few times to take a shit during the bomb sequence. We do well, I mean, that's just I, I think parenting we we watch movies like we're watching a like a season yeah, like we're like binge watching a TV chunks. show. Yeah. 40 minutes at a time. Did you like Oppenheimer? Uh, no. No. I thought it was... Let's take a break. Okay. Losers. And we're back. Yeah. Did you like Oppenheimer? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The black guy. Uh, I forgot we owe... <laughs> 
Oh, uh, well, Christopher Nolan, a lot of money, yeah. so we couldn't say the bad thing about the movie. No, I thought it was. I thought it was bad. Did, wait, were you here when? Oh God, now I can't. I can't remember what Joel described it as. Um, but she was. I think she just described it as a bunch of meetings, either happening or not. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> not entirely untrue. Yeah, we should do a film review segment officially. But I thought Oppenheimer was great until the bomb went off. It was like a cool like two hour movie. Yeah, and then Christopher Nolan's like, "Well, not so fast. Uh-huh. This is actually a three hour movie." Yeah, the last hour being a courtroom thing that he didn't follow at all. Right. It was just not, I. I feel yeah. like if it was any other director but Christopher Nolan, they'd be like, "Let's get it up to the bomb, and then we're out." Right. Which and I usually don't like, like film executive notes, like let yeah. the tour do whatever. But somebody he wants. sometimes but yeah. they know what they're talking. Yeah, about. they would have been right in this specific case. Like I didn't need to see the Robert Downey Jr. black and white courtroom scene. Yeah. After the bomb went off, that no. was the most exciting moment. Yeah, and like also when you watch it over six days, you don't really remember who all the people are. Yeah, you you're know? like, wait, what is this Who's about? The, like wait, socialism? Is this like... Russian guy on their side now? <laughs> is he an ally? But he's mean. But like when they're building the bomb and Matt Damon is there, that was yeah. fun. No, that, it, and then yeah, when it goes enjoy, off, that I, was cool. Yeah, now thinking back on it, I think I I did enjoy the first the first half, but Two I didn't thirds. compartmentalize it. I just think that like the the whole entire experience is tainted by how meandering the whole entire thing is. Yeah, which um, is especially drawn out when you watch it over the course of a week. Yeah, but it's—I mean, it's—it's it's beautiful. It, it was. It was well made. Yeah, I liked that Dune. A, Dune too, a lot more. You also saw that a lot in the more at home at home theater with or experience. without Jill, with Jill. Oh, interesting. With Jill. Uh, and Power through or also through the course of several days. Over two days. So a, lot, a little more doable. Yeah, a lot more doable. Um, also and a long she movie. Watched, she watched Dune, the first one, loved it. Wow. Um, which I was surprised by. Yeah. And then before we were watching this one, she's like, I don't really remember what happens in Dune. And then I we like watched a five or ten minute recap video. I did that, yeah, because I didn't watch Dune 1, but oh. somebody wanted to see Dune 2 for his birthday. Wow. Yeah, that's got to so be I did, I did the five-minute thing. Yeah. I, I thought the five-minute thing was better than the movie, the second I, Yeah, movie. I could yeah. imagine. It sort of cr- crams yeah. it all into right. a story like, that oh, you that's an understand. interesting story. It's yeah. like somebody tells you that at dinner. Like, that sounds <laughs> yeah. cool, but yeah. then you don't have to watch it. It's the three-hour version, yeah. She slower. watched the recap and was just like, I never saw this movie. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yes, you did. You were there and you liked it. And you said that... You fully understood the Lisa Al Ghaib storyline. Yeah. You had notes. He has so many different names Lisa Al Ghaib, Quitzak Hadarak, yeah. Mao Dib. Yeah. It's, it felt like Star Wars fan fiction that I didn't fully get into slash understand. Yeah. I thought, I mean, I, I didn't think it was perfect. Yeah. I think that, like, there's something that's a little boring about just like, Paul Atreides' character is is perfect. He is the Messiah. He yeah. says he's not, but it seems like he actually yeah. is. Um, the box of pain I thought was kind of cheesy and weird. Mm, like put yeah. your hand in this box. Right. That's straight up from the book. It yeah. hurts so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Use the force. Yeah. It seems like it actually wouldn't be that hard to keep your hand in a box of pain if the outcome was certain death if you pulled it out. Yeah, then you would just sort like, of Like, I'd be afraid. I would it. be, yeah. And then they say fear is the mind killer. Like, don't be afraid. It was like, well, actually, aren't you afraid of dying? So yeah. you should leave your hand in the pain box. <laughs> how do you how do you sort of compromise these two things? Yeah, but I thought it was just like it was it was beautiful to watch. It was, it was very epic and grand. Yeah, but that and you don't see a lot of movies away. that like look like that. No, because yeah. none, no, 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 no other movie takes place on this specific planet that Dune takes place. Arrakis on. or Dune? Yes. Um, no, I thought it was great. I also, but like I. Read the first book mm. and watched the first movie, and still like don't fully understand everything. Okay, I, like that's vaguely good. know the characters, and that's yeah, that's it. Yeah, there's all it's like there's the story, which is like good guys versus bad guys that you can understand on yeah. a surface level, and then there's like the details of the story, right? And I didn't get the details, but I understood it was good guy versus bad guy. Yeah, you can kind of tell which the bad guys are. They're the ones that are completely pale they look, yeah. and hairless they look and like killing powder. people for fun. They just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they make them so insanely evil. There's yeah. no nuance. Yeah. It's like... Killed his dad right, or something. This one's evil, this one's evil, and this one's the most evil. Because he's bald, hairless, yeah. and They get skinnier and more evil as they go down. Or the really fat evil guy. Yeah, fat, evil, bald, guy, fat evil guy. But he's kind of smart, and 
he wants power. The other one is like evil and just wants to cause pain. And yeah. the last one is a complete sociopath. <laughs> but borderline an animal. Yeah. And then doesn't he defeat him in a sword fight or something like that? Yes. Pa Duke Paul Atreides defeats uh, the Na Baron Fade Rousa yeah. in, in single combat. I will. Do you remember? I do feel bad for when they have to come down to a single combat. Like, there's only so many ways to make that cool. Yeah, I thought that it was really cool though, because like the entire thing is like you don't really notice because the scoring of, is so good, mm -hmm. and then the score when they do that single combat, it just drops off, and there's no music, and it's just like breathing and slapping. Yeah, and I thought that was kind of cool. I guess at the end of the day, it feels repetitive to me to have like sword fighting. I've seen it before, and I know yeah, who's gonna win. Yeah, you know, right? You know who's gonna win. You know it's gonna happen. It was. There's only so many ways to strike. That's new. yeah. Like why? How is? How do you make it new? It's I like think the I think same that's as Princess Bride. Or right. Something. It's almost, but it's almost like a comfort because you're like, okay, and here comes the sword fight. It's like yeah. in a born movie. You're like, all right, and here's the car chase scene. Right. Every if you movie like it, has to has, nice have one. To have Let's it. see how they do it. Yeah. Um. I'll also say the. This is now uh, an official movie review. Yeah. Segment. Uh, the yeah. casting. I'm not into casting like that. <laughs> you I'm, know I hate casting. Like. Or I'm indifferent everyone, to it. Everyone, the so Star Wars, which I don't actually like the new movies very much. Uh -huh. I think they do a good job of casting people I haven't really seen before. I see. This thing, it was like entirely stunt cast. It's all of the most famous people. It's like, all Austin right. Austin Butler. Austin, yeah, Austin Butler, uh, Javier Bardem. And Chalamet. Then, Chalamet. And then Zendaya, Florence Pugh. As soon as I see her, I'm like, God. And then... Uh, Anya Taylor Joy just making a cameo as his sister. I'm mm -hmm. like, why don't they just get one person that is like <laughs> not, you know, fascinating to me? Not that I don't have to look at the screen and be like, where do I know? Ah, an A-list celebrity. The oh, worst you're saying one, you didn't like the casting. No, I did not like the casting. Oh, I thought you were <laughs> you were praising it right no, now. No, like, everyone was so famous and cool. No, I hate that. Oh, I see. Too I many see famous new, people. Yeah, too many famous people. It's like it looked the entire thing looked like a, a red carpet at the Met Gala or something. <laughs> That's awesome. And but the worst one was Christopher Walken as the Emperor. Yeah, he's like, "What are you doing, he's, making him the Emperor?" It's all just a Christopher Walken impression at yeah, this point. It's so insane. He's like, "Yeah, I thought that was terrible." Interesting. Yeah, which is probably why the movie did so good because he have the most famous people, the hottest people, all right there. You look at the yeah, you look at that movie poster, and you're like, "Wow, this is incredible." It's it's so. It, it's so stunted. I did think when Javier Bardem would. Uh, shout Lisa, what is it? Lisa Al Glaib. <laughs> Lisa Al Glaib. Yeah. It, it was always like a funny moment. Yeah. It was almost like a comedy in that world. No, I think I. He it was like very O'Doyle rule. His character had so little to do. <laughs> yeah, but like, shout it. He was basically interesting right up until the point that he believes that Paul is the Messiah yeah. and then he becomes a cartoon. Yeah. Just he's, like, he's the, he's the one. He's Lisa Al Gaib. I told you, fucking, this is the guy. Yeah, and let's do the fucking blood test now. Why are we fucking yeah. beating around? Kill the me! Place? Stab me with your knife. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't there like some sort of blood transfer. Or the mom. Was yeah, the... in the in the book, I actually remember that. In that was like a lot more interesting because like Stilgar knew or he believed that. Um, you know, Paul was the Messiah, but also knew that that meant he needed to lead, which meant that he knew that Paul needed to kill him. So there was like this kind of like animosity between them. Yeah. Which in the movie was just like, I, I want to die for you. You're you're the one. Was the book also stunt cast? Would it be like the Emperor played by Christopher Walken? Right. Yeah. The, it says, it was, it's oh, a, I the can't Emperor, the, it. the universe's Emperor parentheses. Chris, Think Chris, yeah, Chris Walken. Walken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chris Walken here. <laughs> Hey, I'm Chris Walken here. Read the following as Christopher Walken. I now never listen. thought this would come to pass in this specific really way. It just doesn't seem like an emperor type. Yeah. Well, it seems like Christopher Walken has his own accent. Every character is yeah. Christopher Walken as right. that character. Yeah, you have to just be like, if you're casting a movie, you have to be like, okay, and the emperor will be Chris Walken. <laughs> you, will, you can't be like, okay, the emperor is like this. Who could play that? Maybe yeah. it's... You have to write it for him. Yeah. And uh, truly the opposite of, God, who, Kellen Skarsgård? Is that who... That's who uh, Baron Harkonnen is. Oh, that's right. He's from Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. Like, and he disappears into that character. It's not yeah. just because he's wearing an insane fat suit and a ton of makeup. Like, yeah. he really becomes that guy. Wasn't there another Skarsgård? Or no, I'm thinking of a different movie that had another... the. Bill Sarsgaard was in it. Those Sarsgaards are very 
famous. Yeah, yeah, they good. are. Yeah. They're all good at acting. They really are. And they're tall and hot, too. Yeah, I think to me, Chalamet is also very good at acting, but I didn't think they gave his character anything. He's so one note. He's very skinny for he is, to be like the hero of this movie. Yeah, yeah, it's true. He's like Every, a hipster. Right. Whenever he like did that epic <laughs> walk up the dune and he's standing in profile among his, yeah. in front of his army, I'm like, look how tiny his legs are. <laughs> yeah. I went to he's Jewish camp thin. with this guy and yeah. now he's the star of this movie. Now he's the Messiah? <laughs> I don't buy that. Both in dune and out. Even Luke Skywalker was kind of thicker than that. Yeah, he had thick calves for yes. sure. Yeah. And uh, fucking Han Solo was a movie star. Han Solo was buff. Yeah, he was, he was cut. Yeah. Everyone in this movie was wayfish. Except for Bautista. Dave Bautista. Although even Austin Butler is not like a fucking The Rock. He's ripped, though. Is He's he? absolutely ripped. He, he was, was like, like sword fighting naked. Was he shredded? Yeah, absolutely shredded. Interesting. Yeah. But I don't think of Austin Butler as like a strong guy. Well, you should. Did you ever get the Elvis voice out of oh, him a little bit? Did yeah, you ever do definitely. that? Like sneak into yeah, it a little I, bit? I like. I think Austin Butler is a great actor, but I also just he's kind of like a Christopher Walken type guy. He he's doesn't disappear Elvis into accent, a role. Yeah. He's just like that's Austin Butler. He I would be really like. See that. At one point, he did the sword thing, and he said, "Oh, <laughs> yeah." I think they oh, kept. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When he was fighting Timmy Chalamet at the end, he was like, "You ain't nothing but a hound dog, <laughs> cutting all the swords." <laughs> You ain't nothing but a sore five. <laughs> uh, Austin, that was great. You <laughs> think you're still doing Elvis. Oh, 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 me? Oh. <laughs> you ain't never shot a guy, and you're at least Glaib. I don't know any other Elvis song. I can't do anything else. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How do we not know any other Elvis song? Uh, Blue Hound Dog, shows. I'm all worked up. I'm all shook up. All shook up. All yeah. shook up. <laughs> I think that was it. He was really famous for those two songs. Yes. And it was the 70s. Else. They didn't have any other songs. Right. That was you just have to be hot, have two songs, and suddenly mm -hmm. you're the most famous. If you have a pompadour ever. and you don't go to the army, you're hot. <laughs> or do. Or do. Fuck did it. he? I forget what he did. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Because he had blue suede shoes. That's right. <laughs> all right. That was movie review time. Thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring this episode of our show. Correct. How'd you like more cash? I would love it. The best way to get more cash is to stop wasting cash. Yes, yeah, so you can save cash because that's the cash you already have. Correct. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your Ooh. unwanted subscriptions. Beautiful. Then it monitors your spending and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. Love that. It's pretty logical, actually. Yeah. There it's might be logical. money going out of your account for yeah. an app that and you, you accidentally know got yeah, nine right. years ago, exactly. and they're like, no more. Exactly. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Amazing. Where does that money go, though? Back in your pocket, folks. That's kind of cool. It saves members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. Not bad. And that's just an average. Nice. If you're crazy or maybe even a little stupid, you could probably save even more than that. Right. The dumber you are, the more you save. Exactly. <laughs> so stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash segments. Boom. That's rocketmoney.com slash segments. Mm-hmm. It finds the unwanted subscriptions. It says, no, no, no. 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 <laughs> Rocketmoney.com slash segments. Assholes. All right, we're back yep. in the same room. Let's bring back a new classic. Not That's like right. poetry or noetry. This is a new fan favorite. Good. Which is based on an old thing we did, quick characters. I love it. Where we would yell new characters at each other and the other person has to throw themselves entirely into it. Okay. An improv game of sorts. Uh, all right, great. Um, this is based on the first video we ever made together. Bringing it back. Um, this is the second time we've done it on the podcast. Yeah, so this is the third time we've done it in our whole entire lives. Holy do you want to give me a character first, or do you want me to give you one? All right, I'll give you one first. Okay. <clears throat> Guy on a first date who is overplaying the coolest thing about him. He's actually a descendant of Bram Stoker. You know, the Dracula writer? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay. 
Have you been here before? <laughs> um, not me, but my great granddad used to come here a lot. Oh, that's say, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I hear good things about like the happy. I hour. hear good things about my granddad or my great granddad. Oh, that's really neat. Bram Stokler, Bam, <laughs> Graham Stokler. Do you know his name? <laughs> Do you? You're talking about Bram Stoker. Bram Stoker. Oh yeah, he wrote the Vampire. <laughs> <laughs> my great granddad came up with that. <laughs> came up with it, <laughs> or made it popular. I think. Okay, it seems like you don't know anything about this guy. Uh she'll do a martini, and I'll have a glass of blood. Oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna call my friend and get picked. Please up do. Now. I'm ready for a three way. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> You're really weird. <laughs> okay. All right. Nice um, warm up. So you're a um, a kayaker who got stuck on uh, an island with uh, a fellow kayaker, okay. uh, and you ate them <laughs> pretty much right away. And Before they were sick or tired. Yeah, you resorted to cannibalism the first afternoon, and you're being rescued the next day. <laughs> got it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, oh! There, hey, there he is! Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how long has it been since we've been gone? Uh you, well, you, were, you, uh, you didn't get reported missing until oh. late yesterday afternoon. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm so um, full. So I think it's been a less I'm so <laughs> twelve tired. hours. We do. We had brought a kind bar. Oh, thank You're you. are full, did you say? Oh. So we're looking for. I didn't for... think you'd ever come. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. There's. You know, I ate him. <laughs> you. George? <laughs> George is the other kayaker? Me, yes. He... I hate him. <laughs> Why? It could have been weeks, years, months on this place. This place? So I consumed him in my... this is... while he slept. There's a Sunoco right over there. Really? I yeah. thought that was a Nawazis. <laughs> I thought that was a desert hallucination you... brought on by desert. starvation. This is... You're in Florida. Keep the kind bar. I still have my hoagie. I brought sandwiches for the trip, and I thought I'd get to them second. <laughs> I ate George. <laughs> I see that? I felt full. I still have the sandwiches. And I the see ice his body. It, looked, it looks like you ate his penis oh, first. Oh, actually, PB and J. <laughs> what I the P can't stand possibly for? eat these all. I am stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cut. All right. That would have been a good episode of Stuck, our cartoon about being stuck on an island. Oh, that's right. Only that would be me trying to eat the guy on yeah, yeah. night one. <laughs> and they're not even that stuck. I wake up. I think my <laughs> kayak is actually still good. <laughs> Just not biting my fucking foot. Okay. Guy who's trying to get his friend laid because he just got fired, but it's not that kind of meetup. <laughs> it's not that kind of meetup. Yeah, I'm just sort of sad. Oh, my God. I cannot believe it. Like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'll get unemployment for six weeks, and then I'm fucked i don't have like rich parents well so that means can't. you're not you're you're actually not fucked for six weeks and why don't we get you fucked for six weeks tonight <laughs> i can't i don't even think i can i'm gonna fucking here. i'm gonna wingman you i don't need a yeah. wingman i think I, i'm so gut punched that I, I can't even think about anything else i'm gonna you're gut punched i'm gonna get you cock sucked i have I'm three thousand dollars left to my name how much Three thousand and rent is twenty two fifty. All right, you're buying drinks for the bar then. That's the first. <laughs> that's the first move. That's how we get. Oh people. my god! It just Round of shots on this guy. I won't have health insurance. He doesn't for a have year. health insurance. I need you to wingman for me too. I, I have diabetes. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Diabetes. Six months. <laughs> Not sex. Death. I can't afford to live. Not here. Not anywhere. That's an interesting pickup line, but try try something like, you come here often, because I can make you come often. Or How much money like do you have? Because you don't seem like really stressed out about being unemployed. I have a trust fund that has $40 million <laughs> in it. So give me that. Give me the cash. Don't worry about getting me laid, getting my cock sucked. I'll give you a million dollars if you can get your cock sucked tonight. Oh, sure, great. Let's do that. Now that's the premise of a movie. Oh, that's a really good <laughs> a guy has to have sex to get money from his friend. This is actually kind of on theme. Uh, guy who 
who needs to get Michelle Obama to go on a date with him, uh, and your life depends on it. Okay. Do I see Michelle Obama? You have five minutes with her. Okay. It's Am like I on a date with Michelle? Or no, no, no. This is like um, a, a fundraising gala. event. Uh, you you paid $100,000 for a plate at this <laughs> yeah. table. Uh, it's two tables away from Michelle, but you get some FaceTime. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Oh my God, this is such an honor. It's yeah. so amazing no, the to honor see. Is us. Thank you. Just All to right. see you thank and you so President yes, Barack. Thank you. Oh, hi. are you guys on the rocks? Sorry. By the way, are you? Um, you and Barack. Is... I remember you did an interview where you were talking about the struggles of having children. In yeah, the White House. struggle. It's it's hard to have, but what a I it's a would labor have love. prioritized you. <laughs> what? Uh, look. Uh... <laughs> no, are you doing I... a question of my husband? <laughs> Your ex-husband, your no. ex-husband, what does a single Michelle Obama want out of life? Because I feel like everything you've done so far is in service of this man, who was awesome, by the way. I'm such a huge, yeah. I stand the Obamas. You're, I really do stand the Obamas. Your and, confidence is really intriguing. Really? Yeah. I did three push-ups before I started talking to you. But How much money is in your checking account? $3,000. <laughs> And I do have diabetes. <laughs> Let's do it. <gasps> yes. I can't believe me and Michelle. Yeah. Together forever. Finally. You're on a first hinge date okay. with a fine Latin lover. At one point you say, I thought you were Mexican. <laughs> oh but you have God. no explanation as to why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really like this place. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand how you want me to get this out. Uh, it'll come out naturally. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, me, I'm from Connecticut. Oh, I live in Connecticut. Yeah. Where, my family's from Puerto Rico. Where in Mexico are you from? Ah, <laughs> uh, no, my family's from Puerto Rico. <laughs> oh, I thought you were from Mexico. No, that's not what it said. It's I thought you were Mexican. I thought. Oh, I thought you were Mexican. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it said that on your Hinge profile. Oh, I thought I saw a Mexican <laughs> flag or something. No, I know all of the flags. It said I love Show dirty me, pull dancing. Up, pull up any flag, and I'll tell you what country it is. Uh, I don't really get reception here. Okay. Uh, anyway, because I can describe something. You got green. What does the Mexican flag look like, by the way? It's green. It's white. <laughs> it's red. As in, boy, is my face red, because yeah. I thought you were from Mexico, but you said you're from Trinidad and Tobago. I said Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. That you can't hear, and you're red and orange. And... You're beat red right now. <laughs> yes, it's not a big be. deal. It's, it's fine. Not a big deal. I thought you were from New Jersey. You're from Connecticut. Yeah, that's so actually what? really offensive. That's actually more <laughs> offensive than whatever the hell I said to you. You said, uh, you thought which is I a was bigger Mexican. problem, by the way. The the reverse sexism thing that reverse I'm reverse sexism. Yeah, this is awful. Do you do you listen to Joe Rogan? <laughs> no, of course not. Do you watch Tucker? <laughs> He's on X. He's on ecstasy. <laughs> I'm on eggs. I'm tired of walking on eggshells to see. All I can think of is really bad first dates, but yeah. I got some that are not. This is why we need to go back to um, uh, lonely and horny. Do you have another one? Uh, yeah. A uh, guy at Foot Locker who wants to try on baby shoes. <laughs> wow. So many options. I feel like I'm paralyzed with choice. Yeah. Can I can I help you find anything? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have these Jordans and a... Uh, yeah. Do you look like... Uh, what is that? One and a half. Ten and a half? One and, ten and a half. One and a half. One and a half. <laughs> I'm a one. <laughs> I'm you... like between a one and a one and a half. Um, uh, yeah. In, what uh, in in life? In uh, life. In life. Do you? Oh, those are sick Air Force ones. These are. Do you have them as are... little, <laughs> little, uh, <laughs> little booties? My feet. Um. um yeah. Didn't yeah. grow. Okay. From birth. Yeah. Do you have like little soft booties? I have, yeah. We can. We but have. This is a dope colorway, shoes. dude. Are these the sh new shacks? <laughs> he taps you up. <laughs> little tiny fists. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I have small hands and feet. All right. I'm a size. Yeah, one. Is there even one? Do they have baby sizes? I uh, I think they're. I think it's called like. Uh, it's maybe it's done in months, and maybe the one is like one to two, as in like one to two years or something yeah. like that. Gemma hasn't worn shoes yet, though. She's never worn shoes. Uh, no. When does that no. happen? Um, I think when they start walking. I see some kids in like some kind of like slippers, but we 
basically just put her in socks all the time. Interesting. She's not far from shoes, though. Shoes. She has a pair of shoes. She just she doesn't have any bones in her feet. Like yeah. it's you can't make her put anything on. Would you say baby? You have baby shoes never worn. For sale. Uh, I don't want to. Yeah, that's the. I, they're not for sale. That's the, for that sale. main way. <laughs> baby. Uh, so it's like the nicest story. Baby shoes never worn, but she will. <laughs> yeah, but soon, soon yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> baby shoes not worn yet. The happiest story ever told. Guy on a job interview, you has really bad answers to some pretty banal and standard questions. Great. Uh, so this has been great. Uh, just one last kind of funny curveball oh. just to see that uh, you answer in a nice, normal fashion before, let's just say, you get the job, but you pretty much have the yeah. job. Hope I don't blow it on the finish line, sir. <laughs> yeah. How many golf balls would you say fill up this room? How <laughs> just... many golf balls? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. A hazard uh, three or, f uh, <laughs> let's say, 12. 12. 12 or... Um, well, what's the size of the room? It's yeah. it looks like Talk it's through about, it. Walk through your this rationale. Is ten feet by ten <laughs> feet with looks like eleven. Feet. Nice ceiling height, by the way. Appreciate it. My it. Yeah. office with the window over there. <laughs> it's really about to be good height. Um, so yeah, Just like how many golf balls do you think fill this? Forty-five. Forty-five. I feel like that fills the space. Did you know what I mean like you don't mean just like how many would be good to have? Like it's oh I'm. This I room mean, you shut balls. the door and it's, it's filled like, with a brim oh, with golf balls. Oh, you, I thought you meant like, damn, this room, this room's full of golf balls. Why there's why there's forty balls in here? You know, but if you're saying how many actually Soup literally to nuts, make it ceiling, so there's wall nothing wall. but balls in here? What a premise! What a premise! I should let's let's get my four hundred one k set up because you said I had the job, but a um, hundred. 110, maybe. Thank you so I much think. for coming in. I agree. Uh, this is a formality. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Baby hand. <laughs> <laughs> Small hand and a bad handshake, and you were thousands Crossing off. my leg. <laughs> Size one shoe. Uh, oh, wait. That was mine. You yeah. got one more for me. Uh, okay. Uh, you are, you're on a flight uh, on the tarmac. Your flight is not taking off. It's stuck. This is perfect. Um, I was on a flight yesterday. Yeah. Okay. So you are stuck on a on an airplane on the runway, mm -hmm. uh, and you are going through a really messy divorce with the pilot of the plane. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, hey there, folks. We are uh, we're just waiting for takeoff. Uh, it looks like there's the runway is a little backed up. Uh, we're we're about tenth in line. Don't so. expect to leave anytime soon. <laughs> Uh, guy next to you. Um, excuse me. I was saying, don't expect to leave anytime soon. I <sighs> more than know the pilot. <laughs> We're going through. It's fine. I don't want to get into it. Enjoy the flight, <laughs> uh, sir. Can I have you buckle? An insanely <laughs> messy separation. Um, and you, sorry, don't talk to me like I'm a fucking toddler. <laughs> Did Todd send you back here? Tell him I'll put the seatbelt on <laughs> when he gets the fuck away from the gate. Uh, make sure everybody, <laughs> just make sure your seatbelts are on, especially you. I'll put my seatbelt <laughs> on when you back up from the fucking gate. And I'll back up from the fucking gate when you sign the fucking papers, Dale. Oh my God. Yes. By the way, this is exactly what I expected would happen. He would sabotage a fucking plane filled with people just to get his way. Okay. Oh, uh, and, and here they come to de-ice us, actually. <laughs> so I'm going to turn the seatbelt sign off. We're going to be here for a while. Exactly. I a wish while. someone would de-ice his cock. You know he has a frozen little prick dick. I do dick. not. He has, he does. I do not. Prick dick. Prick <laughs> dick. Holy shit, the, the whole plane. airplane is doing it. <laughs> It's a mutiny. Todd runs out his icicle dick out. <laughs> I knew this, it. You call this a prick. <laughs> All right. One last one. Yeah. Guy who just shat himself during an all-hands meeting and his office crush is talking to him for the first time ever, whispering while the CEO addresses the room. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 it smells oh, awful in here, doesn't it? I know. It's, it fucking, this room reeks. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, what's your name? <laughs> what's your name? Tony. 
Tony, hey, yeah, I'm Veronica. Hi, Veronica. Oh hey, my God. Things like that. <laughs> what is that you're sitting on? I, this is pie. <laughs> What's that? I'm sitting. I sat hey, on I wouldn't mind getting some pie with you later. <laughs> I'm really I'm a, turned on. I really. Yeah, I feel like we have yeah, a lot in common. We do. Yeah. I've been, I've been watching you. Oh, sorry. For can yeah. you scoot over for a second? I just need to see the seat of your pants. I'm gonna, sc I'll scoot back, and you can scoot <laughs> in. Oh my God, it reeks. It reeks, guys. <laughs> Here, Veronica, <laughs> let's. Let's pay some some respect to the <laughs> boss, though. Let's shh, oh, and we'll catch some up. Chocolate on your fingers. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. sighs> That's a good rom com moment. It's like yeah. you have to eat your own shit to yeah. prove that it's chocolate. We've done that. We've done that in Jake and Amir several times. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that in something about Mary? It's like the hair gel thing. Oh yeah, yeah. He has he, has he to like use he's, semen as hair gel. Right. He's jerking off. Yeah. Uh, and he his he shoots some cum and he doesn't know where yeah. it went. Yeah, and then he and answers the door ear. and it's on his ear. <laughs> yeah, and she says, and she says you have gel. hair gel and then she puts it in her hair and it goes straight up. They don't make movies like that anymore. Yeah. Nothing was funnier than that. That the was time. the pinnacle of late nineties comedy. That was in the trailer, which seems like really because yeah, it's come raunchy yeah it's semen yeah and now that i think of it as an adult like when i was watching it i was 13 so i was yeah. really sure the physics of it but for semen for come to be that viscous that it would hang off yeah. your ear no he's either that jerking would be something off too I much or say, not enough i would say in the fucking scripting phase that doesn't make sense like if right. i said and then she has a, a strand of cum by his ear yeah I would think I would say like, oh, that doesn't fully make sense. Like right. semen is so. And you, but would you be fine with him zipping his whole entire penis all and the way then into where, Yeah, the God, that was so. Thing. That was so like visceral seeing that. Yeah, the zipper. And yeah, then the zipper into dick. The, yeah, and then he had it stuck. And then they they alluded to it a long time, but then when they showed it, the crowd was like, yeah, it was yeah. into it. Yeah, which doesn't again does not happen anymore. Um, no, I bet that we should. That would be another fun segment is uh, watching movies that didn't age well. Mm. Like, there's a lot of stuff they make fun of in that. And I mean, I think in, in any of the Mary. yeah, in any of these comedies that we grew up on, I think would be very, very problematic. I think I told you this recently, but in Ace Ventura, one of my favorite movies growing up. Oh yeah, the, everybody. The climax right. of the movie is you find out uh, a woman is trans, and then every police officer in the room starts vomiting, yeah. and that's how they sort of get away, because they can't stop puking at right. the bottom of a trans. At the idea. <laughs> well, they all kissed, they all kissed her. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> he has to fucking scrub his tongue. Right. Oh my god, it's the worst yeah. Thing of the Einhorn world. is or Einhorn is Finkel. Finkel is Einhorn. <laughs> it's the and then main he, part of the movie. Yeah, then he just goes over and he just vomits. <laughs> and then everybody in and the then, room yeah. vomits. Including Dan Marino. <laughs> Honestly, he should be canceled for that. Marino's yeah. in this movie. Um no, yeah, we, we should let us know which movies you think are the most problematic and we should re, we should rewatch them. Yeah, or just any 90s uh raunchy comedies. Yeah. We, I can come over and we can watch them with um headphones. It's a great idea. But you have to stifle your laughter too, so I would wear like a ball gag. <laughs> headphones and a ski mask yeah that's a good character for quick characters actually <laughs> i'm babysitting your child i spill wine on my pants so i take them off yeah. and do a load of laundry uh -huh. i want to watch the movie but i don't want to talk to wake up your child so you come home and i'm wearing headphones no pants and, and a ball, ball gag yeah. and i'm watching something about Mary. that would be so disturbing <laughs> oh my <laughs> god oh mr and mrs Hurwitz. i wouldn't pay you <laughs> see you there but Gemma's completely fine yeah she's in a different room sleeping. right right yeah, i'm an amazing so, that would ruin my life i think i don't think i could ever <laughs> i would never have another babysitter ever again okay yeah have you had a babysitter yet yeah we've had Two. Oh. Two babysitters. Is that stressful? Or I guess maybe three. Our downstairs neighbor has done it. We've like known her, so that that was normal. Um Jill's parents have done it. Oh yeah. I mean and if it's that's family, easy. you gotta yeah. trust. Um but then twice we like had friends that recommended uh people randos. That, like yeah, randos that we met for the first time as Gems asleep in a room. And we're like, All right. 
Don't. We're out of here. Kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so afraid to leave. Well, let's get an Italian dinner. Yeah. <sighs> you and think then, he's okay? All right. And then we're just at dinner, like literally like watching the baby monitor or just looking at pictures. It really makes no... We don't need to leave the house. <laughs> yeah. You could we, have a dinner at home. Yeah. But it's not considered a date night if you don't leave the yeah, house. Yeah, exactly. What if they recommended a babysitter and just this 58-year-old guy showed up? Tony. He seems perfectly lovely, but it's like, why is this a 58-year-old guy? I would be fine with that. You'd be fine with a 58-year-old? Yeah. More so than like a sweet teenage lady, which you assume is like a babysitter? Yeah. No, I would be perfectly fine with that. I think I think maybe I'm more okay with an adult than somebody that seems somebody like pretty young. Somebody older than you. Yeah. I would, I would be fine with somebody older than me. Really last minute thing. But have you noticed as you get older that like adults are now younger than you? Like oh, I'm yeah. meeting like executives. I'm like, oh, what do you do? Like you're 33. He's like, oh yeah, I'm an Amazon executive or I'm a VP. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But you're 19. It's like, no, I'm 38. Right. And you're 41. Yeah. My, Jill, Jill watches like Housewives sometimes and <laughs> or like Selling Sunset. And I see these people that are like, oh, wow, like this is, she, she looks older. And then she's 36. <laughs> I'm like, huh. So this middle aged woman is two years younger than me? Doesn't make sense. Well, that's, a, that's odd. How do you have four kids if you're 40? Yeah. Well, I guess that's fairly easily. And also, like, all of the old soccer players are. Uh, two years younger than me now yeah it's the like, athletes doesn't ever make sense i mean yeah. i'm older than lebron but he's basically like could be my father it seems yeah 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 he's 39 that's old that's old for being as good as he is <laughs> uh all right that was it solid up we're back at it we're back in the what is it back in the back at it again with the white tan slash yeah. vans cans cans yeah. uh for more of us you can watch our patreon patreon.com slash ja ja we're um, revisiting some classic Jake and Amir episodes. Yeah, we watched some. We watched a really good one last week. I think it was, was Girls. Oh, Girls, the one yeah. In the club. Yeah, we're we're trying different pickup lines. Basically, this quick character. Yeah, thing, it's true. Just chopped up with quick cuts. Yeah, um, and we're recording these as videos, so you can watch it on our YouTube channel. True, which is like uh, called Jake and Amir Pods. But if you're if you search Jake and Amir segments on YouTube. Yeah. You'll find it. Just Google us and follow everything. 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 From Letterboxd yeah, to, to my Tumblr. old MySpace um, to, to my LinkedIn. <laughs> I have a LinkedIn and a Zanga. That's right. I have a live journal. We should get back on MySpace. We have an OnlyFans. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, But I did see a little bright light when I was taking a shit the other day. That's Was that right. you? Yes. You yes. son of a bitch. I put a ring in your toilet. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the anal ring. <laughs> An aura ring. Yeah, a ring on your ring. Uh, and we'll be back next Monday as always. Goodbye, right. everybody. That was a HeadGum original.